Good morning. Let's stand up first to have a breathing exercise. Come on. We need to be awake. <laughs> so I would like to request um, if you can close your eyes. And if you're comfortable, please do so. Or if not, you can let your eyes remain open. And we'll do the breathing exercise. So when I say inhale, please inhale as deeply as you can. And then exhale. Okay? So let's start. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Please continue doing that as I speak. Appreciate yourselves for coming today and feeding your mind with new information that will help you in your settlement in this new place. Appreciate your loved ones, your friends, your classmates, your friends, for all the support that they've been giving you. Just appreciate this moment. And let's do our last inhale and exhale. As you open your eyes, I would like you to tell the person next to you, this is a great morning. This is a great morning. And I want you to walk around, find two more people, and say, this is a great morning. Come on, walk around. Walk around. You can walk around. Yeah, this is, find two more people. Say, this is a great morning. Okay. So please have a seat, everyone. Thank you. How does it feel? Good. Great. So let's, uh, I'll ask again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now there's the difference with that breathing, right? I just didn't ask you to do that for silliness. There's a purpose. Why? Because did you know that breathing releases toxins from our body? It relaxes our mind and body and gives us clarity and focus to the things that we are doing. And as newcomers, there are things that in our daily life, things that we are thinking every day, how to get a job, where to rent, schooling, so many things, right? We get so busy and sometimes we feel overwhelmed. But it is very important for us to take care of ourselves, to maybe pause for a while and just start breathing so that we will come back into that balance and can think again properly as we go along. So breathing is one thing that you can add in your toolkit in your living your life here in Winnipeg, right? This is free because we breathe every day and we can access it anytime that we just focus our attention into that breathing, okay? So very good, good job. And before we move further, I am Rosalind Advencula. I am um, the coordinator for the Neighborhood Immigrant Settlement Program and I'm working at Immigrant Center. And just a reminder, um, I speak 100 kilometers per hour, so please feel free to stop me or do this if I need to slow down, and I'll be so happy, okay? And I am an immigrant myself too. I came to Canada five years ago, and five years ago, I was sitting on the same chairs that you were sitting right now, and I'm so happy that I went into this new play, into this entry program, because this is where I learned the information that I need to go on and establish myself in Canada. And I also know how it feels to be a newcomer, that I know five years ago I was in the airport, my family accompanied me to the airport, waving goodbye, smiling, because I know I'll be fulfilling my Canadian dream, right? But deep inside, heart is breaking. And I know they're doing the same thing too, saying goodbye with a smile, but our hearts are connecting. But I told myself, this is my dream, this is my Canadian dream. I have to go there to help my family and the people that I'm leaving behind. So we are all here for a purpose, right? And cultural adaptation is a part of our life in here. We come into a new place with new set of culture and how can we adapt here so that we can better function. And that will be our topic for the day. So we will be discussing about what culture is, what is culture shock, what are the phases of cross-cultural adaptation? And what are the available psychosocial and settlement services? Why do we need to talk about this? Because as newcomers, we can experience adaptation at different, different times of our lives. It might not be the same for you and for you, 
because we as human beings has our own personalities, coping skills, education, and experiences in life. So one adaptation might look differently from one person to the other. But this presentation will give you an idea that it is a normal process, that you are not alone, and that there are services out there that can support you. Okay? So let's start <coughs> with greetings, because greeting is one way or one part of our culture. This is the first thing that we see from someone from a different culture, right? Mm -hmm. And we all came from different walks of life, and from our country of origin, we have different <coughs> ways of greeting one another, and it our own language as well. So I would like to ask for volunteers. If you don't volunteer, I'll volunteer. So no escape, okay? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you'll still speak. Um, to share us about how you greet people in your country. How did you say, how do you say, how are you in your own language and what gesture do you use, right? If it's a friend to friend, formal, or um, greeting for the elderly, okay? Who would like to start? It's your time to shine. <laughs> oh, we got a volunteer. Oh, that, that's a very good class. Please stand up. Please tell us your name, where you're from. My name is uh, Faz Mohyuddin. I'm from Pakistan. And uh, I'm here in Canada just a month ago. Wow. Of course of us. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, for the greetings, uh, we have a uh, different culture, of course, like everybody. Uh, for the uh, people of your age, uh, like for male, we sometimes, uh, you know, say hello uh, in our language. Kya hal hai? Kya la, is, kya yes, hai? It is kya hal hai. Oh, wonderful. And in my mother tongue, uh, I know a few of us know very well. Ki hal hai? Kaisi tu biye the? Oh, ki hal hai? So, uh, if you are meeting some elders, so you always give respect to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you uh, say the same words, but in a different tone. Kya hal hai? Like that, you have to just bow your head. Oh, you bow. Giving the, yeah, giving the respect to that person. This is how we express. Uh, uh, and if, of course, if you are meeting your friends, it's like uh, here in Canada also, if you are in the age group and you are very frank with each other, so you just hug each other and then you say, hello, how are you, oh. in the same language. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you. So it's Kihali? Kihali. Kihali. Okay, we learned something. Kihali. And Kihali. how should we reply? If you say Kihali. Uh, Matika. I'm fine. Matika. Yes. Matika. Matika. Wonderful. I learned you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Great job. And I saw another volunteer. Well, same language. Oh, same language. Okay, very good. Who else wants to share? Oh, okay. There's one here and here. I love this class. <laughs> Everyone wants to volunteer. Don't Hi. want to be volunteered. I'm from Korea, and uh, we don't have any special language for uh, how are you. Mm -hmm. We just say hello, and it's in Korean. 안녕하세요. Oh. Uh, like in Pakistan, we uh, show respect to elderly people or people we don't know much well, uh, we bow to. Annyeonghaseyo. Mm. And uh, for familiar people or younger people, Annyeong. 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 Rest in our land. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so there is that beauty in different, <coughs> how people greet differently in different countries, right? And we can see also <coughs> that we came from different places, but we can see Yes, there might be differences on how we greet, how we show that respect, but still there are lots of similarities on the way that we greet, especially treating people, especially the elders with respect. It is very common in all the sharing, right? We might show it differently, but that's the one thing that is common, we respect. And um, right now we are in Winnipeg and this is a multicultural city. We will be seeing people from different places, from different countries, and it will be good for us to have that awareness of the existence of other culture so that when we are aware that they also exist as we are, we will have that layer of understanding. We will understand that yes, we have differences, but we also have similarities that connects us all as human beings in this new place. And when we have that, then that layer of respect to one another is very important, especially in living um, harmoniously in this new place. So that's the importance of getting to know how other culture does their greetings. But again, this is just one of the first layer. There's so many things that is included in that culture. So culture are a set of beliefs, values, behaviors, the way of life, language, food, clothing, arts, and music. 
anything that we shared from our country of origin. So this is shared by common group of people who lives in the same place. So in one country, we have that common culture. And even if we live in one country, there are separate subcultures as well because there's different places too that has their own culture. And I think even families has their own culture too. But it's, it is being influenced by the broader culture of our country. And pass from generation to generation, right? So whatever we have now, it has been to us, it has been passed to us by our previous generation. And then what we would pass to the next generation lies within our hands right now. What are the things that are important to us that we would like them to have until the end of time, right? It lies in our hands right now. And it evolves over time, it changes. Canada's culture 60 years ago may not be the same as right now, and even from the country of origin that we came from, because there are, there are different factors, right? Economy, politics, right now the information technology is changing our world. I know before, people, when they come to Canada or different parts of the world, the way we communicate, we write, we snail mail, right? We vegetate, and then send it to back home. But right now, the presence of social media, we can connect to people through Facebook or YM or Skype, right? So sometimes it lessens the homesickness of people as well. And then culture has its two parts, just like what we were talking about. But I would like to show this analogy of the plant. The culture has its own visible part, which represents, is represented by the leaves, right? This is something that we can see right away. So that's the language, clothing, food, arts, music, behavior, greetings, the way that you also um, share to us, right? But then we shouldn't judge the culture by just what we see from the outside, because there is always that invincible part of the culture that drives, that motivates, that affects that culture. So that is that invincible part, just like the roots. It holds strongly that culture, that's why that's, that's what it is showing in the outside, just like the beliefs, values, the worldview of that culture of that person that we can see in the outside. Okay, so there's always two, two parts. And we'll move now to cross-cultural adaptation. So this is when a person adapts or adjusts into a new country. As we were sharing a while ago, you've got lots of great things that is from all their own culture that you would like to bring in here. And then again, the balance of which one should I take from this new culture? So I feel like it's a seesaw. Sometimes <coughs> if it's too heavy on the other side, on our own culture, it might not be balanced, right? And if it's too heavy on the Canadian culture, it might not be balanced as well. But if it's at the same level, then it's balanced. We will live uh, appropriately or better. And cross-cultural adaptation has its different stages. And again, I would like to remind you that different person can be on different stages on a certain time because we have different life experiences, coping uh, mechanisms. I would just like to share this to you so that you know when you are on a certain stage and you know, oh, I am here. This is what I need to do. That one can move from one phase to the other at different times as well. So the first one, phases of cross-cultural adaptation. So the honeymoon or fascination phase. Can you identify yourself in the picture that I'm living my Canadian dream, I'm here. I can see some smiles, yes, <laughs> yeah. Everything is new, interesting, and exciting. You feel like a tourist. You feel like there's a new hope that's in here. We want to have a good future for ourselves, for our children, we're here. We're free from war from torture, the ones that you've mentioned a while ago. New opportunities that I can have in here. Is anyone in this space right now? I can see some smiles, <laughs> no? Or did any one of you experience this stage? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. that's been, been there. <laughs> so I'm wondering where are you right now? <laughs> always. <laughs> always, always, that's good, so that's very Forever. good. Forever. <laughs> yeah, being happy, being positive, right? Very good, I love that, thank you. And then the next phase it is what we call transition or crisis phase. So this is when a person realizes that he or she needs to make 
changes or adjustment in this new place. So this is the stage wherein we see much differences than similarities from back home. Can you identify yourself in this picture? Is anyone in this stage? Don't know what to do? So this is where culture shock is. So this is when you feel discomfort in a new place. Like, what am I doing here? Feels like that sometimes, right? Yeah. Some are laughing. <laughs> Maybe I, I won't ask who's in that one, right? And these are the different factors why. Does not know what behavior is appropriate. Because when we come here, there are things that are spoken, right? That are written that we know that, oh, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. But there are also things that are unspoken. We are in that state. Should I do this or should I not do this? Who should I ask? And I would like to share you the story that had happened to me when I was new as well. I'm only a, man, a month in Canada at that time when I had my first job. And I was on a bus stop waiting for my bus to go to work. At that time, there's a young man who approached me. And then he said, you have a nice shoes. I said, thank you. And then the next thing he said, can you please take off your shoes? Guess what I did? I took off my shoes. <laughs> but it didn't end there. And then he asked me, can I smell your feet? And then in my mind, I'm, say, I'm asking, is it normal here in Canada? But my instinct said no. So I told the person no. But the person, the young man, asked again, can I smell your feet? And I'm getting scared already because it's only the two of us in the bus stop early in the morning. And he asked again for the third time. But fortunately, the bus came. So I was able to get into the bus, and I felt safe. Then when I went to my work, I told my supervisor, who's Canadian, and he said, Rose, we don't do that here in Canada. I said, I thought it's friendly Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I went home, I told my husband. And then he said, what are you thinking? We don't even do that in Philippines. <laughs> I said, I don't know anymore. But yeah, that one is a funny story, right? And sometimes we are in a situation wherein we don't know is it right or wrong that we have to have our presence of mind and right way of thinking? And maybe it can happen in a workplace, right? There are, maybe we are, we are in a situation, should I did do this or should I do that? But it's good for us to ask first from our supervisors or co-workers because maybe if we do things that we really don't know and we didn't consult, we might do things that is so bad that may cost us our job too. And in our lives as well. It is always good to ask, have that presence of mind, right? So don't follow me in that story. But I learned from there because I feel like everyone is so nice, everyone's smiling, so. But not everything is great, right? May not speak the language and does not understand how to do things. So learning a new language is another layer of finding a job, finding a school, childcare, school system, right? But this group got that language already, so. It's good. Weather, I heard something about weather, but I think you're in the right time right now, springtime, right? <laughs> the worst winter, I hope, is over. <laughs> and let's hope for the better, right? But if you've experienced winter, who came here January? Last October. Last October, so you survived, so it's great, yeah? <laughs> so, and many people here live so many years, but they're still good, right? As long as we wear appropriate clothing, then we'll be good, right? I've been here five years, weathered it all. <laughs> so you can also do that. The transit system, right? It's different. I know from back home, everywhere is a bus stop. You just stop and say, para, para. <laughs> and then the bus or the jeepney will stop. But in here, you have to be on a bus stop on, on, time. on time because seconds that you miss it, Oh, you'll wait again maybe 15, 20 minutes and you might be late at work, right? Raising children. The way we raise our children back home might be different from the way we raise our children here. And there's different laws that we have to follow. And I think that will be on, your, on a different presentation, right? School system. So school system of our children and even universities can be different from back home to here. So it will be good for us to get involved in our children's school so that we know what is expected of them, how they are doing, and how can we help them better. And um, people say that children adapt faster, but I think even if children adapt faster, it will still be good for us to recognize that if we are experiencing cultural adaptation, 
our children is too. So we have to be there for them. We have to have that communication still because they need that sense of belonging too. And maybe they are thinking, oh, is this right? Is this wrong? But if they have that communication with us, then we can guide them and we can assure them that, yes, you're doing good. I'm here for you, okay? Um, child care. Back home, we can leave our children to our relatives or neighbors, right? When we are going to work or we'll do something. But in here, you have to have a proper child care that is in place before we go to school or we go to work. We cannot leave our children by themselves at home if they're 12 years and below, okay? Remember that. <laughs> Professional accreditation, this is another thing, that we came here with that profession, and then when we come here, we have to go through that process. And the big thing, we miss our family and friends, right? But again, there's Skype, uh, what I call this, Facebook, YM, we can communicate faster with them now. And people got different reactions in the roadblock. So because this stage, this is where the culture shock is. This is where the barriers is. So I would like to have this example of the chair, okay? So for example, this is where I am right now. And where Michelle is, is my goal in life here, right? We all came here and we have our goal. So I'm living, living my life and suddenly, there's a block in front of me, right? How can I go to where I wanted to go if there's something in front of me? What do you think should I do? Uh, Turn it around, it. lift it. Go over it or go under it. Go over it or <laughs> under, maybe I can jump, yeah? 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 Good. What, what's that? Move it, remove. What's that? Go through, okay, if I'll be invincible. Yes, it's good you have that because people have different reactions. Some people have that fight tendency. They get frustrated, they get mad on a certain situation. They kick it, right? For example, they get mad at it, they fight with it. But you think that it will resolve the situation? No. no. It will just make things worse, right? And then other people got this flight reaction that they leave the situation that, yes, I'm living my life, living my life, and suddenly there's this roadblock here. I don't want to be here anymore. Goodbye. So they live things. They don't confront it. They don't face it. But the third one, I'm happy that this group said, you can do so many things. I can go over, maybe, or under, side, or through it, right? It's good because you thought that there's a solution to every roadblock that we have right now. It is just temporary as long as we know and we have that ability as long as we believe that we can survive, right? I might be in this situation right now, but I can stop, pause for a while, and maybe breathe so that we can think properly again, have that problem solving skills again, and go back on track and be able to, yeah, I can go here so that I can get there, crawl if I can too. Because human beings have that resiliency. Have you heard about resiliency? It is our ability to bounce back to our normal state. I always remember this saying from back home where I come from, from Philippines, about the bamboo tree. Do you know the bamboo tree? Yes. Yeah? This bamboo tree, not like the other trees, when a strong, strong storm comes, some trees might break, right? But the bamboo tree will just bow down while the storm is coming. But after that storm, this bamboo will rise up, up, and again. And that's how we are as human beings. If there's problems, if there's situations that we can't handle, we don't give up. We just wait. But after that, we'll rise again. And we learn from those situations that had happened in our life. We become stronger. And I like what our friend said here. He, he's very positive, right? That positive outlook in life, positivity, will help us get through the situation that we are in, right? It will be our weapon in this adaptation because life isn't always perfect. There will be challenges. But if we believe that there's a solution, that there's a hope, and we believe in our ability, then we can go where we want it to go. Okay? Thank you. The next phase, gradual adjustment or recovery. So when we are in that situation, right? Bowing down. It's not the end. We won't stay there. We will have that gradual adjustment that when we have, for example, job search or abiding by the law, we don't know where to go, we start going out 
reaching, going out to services that can help us, like entry program or maybe settlement workers that can give us information on the things that we need to go to or we need to have so that we can survive here. I feel, yeah, I can see that some are you getting hot already. We'll get th 30 minutes, we'll be good. <laughs> and then you're trying to um, start being involved in the community, being engaged. Because from the country that we were from, we are part of a community, we have our relatives. And then when we come into this new place, we start building our social networks again. We are starting to look for that sense of belonging, right? So maybe your classmates here can be your friend, or if you go out to your community, connect with other people, then it can help you in your adjustment as well. And then the last phase is the acceptance or adjustment phase. So you feel more comfortable in this new culture, you no longer regret coming to Canada, you feel content and you have long-term goals. So if you would like to work, then you have a plan or maybe you are working already. If you wanted to study, maybe you're in that field already. So different, again, different things, different scenarios for different people, right? And you create that new identity. I like this picture of the plant because I read it from um, a Filipino newspaper back then. It is written by um, youth, but I, I did uh, recall anymore the name of that person, but she talked about um, transplantation. That um, article said that that youth felt like she's a plant that has been transplanted. So she's from her country of origin, that plant from that soil, right? The soil from that country of origin has been transplanted into this new place, been transplanted into this new soil, right? So there's that combination. So do you think this plant will still be the same? No. no more, because yes, there can be some parts of it, but there's that integration of that new soil in it, right? That will make this plant better. It will thrive better, just like us. The combination of our own culture, Canada's culture, and we are the one who would decide. The plant can decide, right? But for us, we can decide what can we keep, what can we get to make us fit and suitable in this new place. Again, it lies in our hands, our decision-making skills, right? It's being respected and recognizing here. As I mentioned, there are free services out there that you can go to. This is funded by the government, so this is free, you can access it. So for psychosocial, if you want to talk about cultural adaptation, about emotion, relationship with your children, husband, wife, these are the places that you can go to. Again, they are free. So Mount Carmel Clinic, their multicultural wellness program, it's at Main Street, so they have social workers that speak different language. And if, you, if they don't have that language, they can give you um, free interpreters. They can provide you that one. So the service can still be accessible. Because I know, right, I know some emotions when it's from our country of origin, when we translate it into English, it changes, right, the impact of it. Aurora Family Therapy Center, it's within the University of Winnipeg building. And then Immigrant Women's Counseling, it is at Access Norwest at 785 QAP. Q18, but they also have an office here at Portage. Settlement services. Have you heard about Immigrant Center before? Yes, have you been there? Yes. Yeah, you've been there, yeah, <laughs> you're attending the program. So that's where I work right now. So it is at 100 Adelaide Street. So we offer different settlement and different types of services for newcomers. So if you go there, you will have a settlement counselor that will help you with your PR card, SIM card, health card, or if you wanted to be connected to different services, then Immigrant Center can help you with that. We also have employment services that can help you be connected with employers. We also have our cooking and nutrition program. So we have a dietitian and a nutrition facilitator in the basement. We have a beautiful kitchen and they teach newcomers about Canadian cooking. So it will be good for you to participate if you're interested. We have Access English Center. If you would like to practice your conversation skills, your English speaking, it's free at Immigrant Center. Or if you want to volunteer to become a facilitator at Access English, you can go there as well. So we have different programs that are available. 
Jewish Child and Family Services, you can also go there. Aquea Francophone, so if you're a French speaker, you can access their service as well. And then the Neighborhood Immigrant Settlement Program. This is the program that I am coordinating right now. So currently, we have 23 settlement workers that are located in 10 areas of Winnipeg so that settlement services will be accessible to you. If you think it's hard for you to travel long ways, there will be settlement workers in different places. For example, you live in downtown area. Who here lives in downtown area? Yeah, so we have one at West Central Women's Resource Center in Ellis. If you want more information about that, I can give you. If you live in Seven Oaks area, anyone lives in Seven Oaks? Yes, we have settlement workers at the Seven Oaks um, Adult Learning Center at 950 Jefferson. If you live in Fort Garry, Fort Richmond area, who lives in that place? Yes, we also have settlement worker in that area. So in each area that you live, there's a close settlement worker. And in Inkster area, who lives in the Inkster area? No one right now, Kiwaitin, Alexander, Roy. Yeah, because we have our settlement worker in the back, Abigail. So she's one of our settlement workers that works in the neighborhood. So you can connect to them anytime you can go as a walk-in or make an appointment and they also have they can also do home visit for example if you have little children and it will be hard for you to get out of the house then they can do home visit and give you information they also have different programmings so different neighborhood varies because there's different people who lives in there some neighborhood offers cooking class parenting program money management conversation circle Again, it's different from different places. So if you're interested to be connected, please let me know. So thank you very much for being great participants. Not yet, I would like you to please stand up. We started with an activity and ends with an activity, sorry. So at a count of one, two, three, I would like you to say, I can do it, okay? <laughs> Everyone, so one, two, three. I, I can do it. it. And then to the person next to you, you can do it. Oh, yeah. You can do it.